Hello everybody, and welcome to Boss Battle Round 27. I'm your host, Goron1988, and I am here with... Welcome, Cat. Hello. So, this battle, I haven't been feeling too great about it, but I think it will be interesting. Um, I, I've just been thinking myself that, uh, well, th there's lots of ways this battle could go, so we've just got to see how it goes. Um, I'll display it now and then ask, what do you think? So, Baronet versus Swing Rover. Well, on stats-wise and pure on destructive power-wise, this is a very intense <laughs> matchup. Destructive power-wise, it's intense. Um, we'll go into the stats themselves, but, uh, you know, uh, Twin Rover, I always like watching their matches because they've got a certain charm about them, which may help them or hurt them. But also on top of that, they've got so many abilities that, uh, um, in my opinion, uh, anything could effectively happen here. Um, yeah. So, that's that. Uh, going further into it, here's Baronade, Health B, Power D, Intelligence F, Mobility D, Electric Stun A, Jellyfish B, Flail B. I mean... Baronade has some good stats. Um, as always, the intelligence of Baronade does not help it at all. Yeah, the, <clears throat> the, the, the fact that a couple of fighters have the same intelligence problem, well, well, not the same, but technically the same, just on different shades of the same issue. Yes. Is it really, really cuts them back? Mm. But Baronade does have one of the most overpowered special abilities on a paper level. On paper level, definitely. And um, let me just say, because again, it's something I should have said at the start of this. Um, while we don't go through the specifics of the fights before, Baronade has pulled its weight amongst quite a few of the bosses here, ha hasn't it, Cat? And yeah, partly, the... yeah. Sorry, you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I was only gonna say that. Like, the Baronade's toolkit is wide, not nearly as wide as uh, their opponent this time, but very wide. And effective. It just the intelligence factor is setting it back, but that doesn't still make the tools less powerful. Yes, yes. Okay, our second boss, Twin Rover, Health F, Power F, Intelligence A, Mobility S, Magic Resist B, Magic Attack B, Fusion B. I mean, Twin Rover, we've noticed before that a good intelligence and a good mobility and a decent special ability, it can carry quite a few fights, really, can't it, Cat? Yeah, e even those factors alone, I could see winning many fights, but then you add in the varied magical abilities on top of that. Yeah. That's powerful. And one of the things we've had to deal with before, uh, with regards to Twin Rover, is just the fact that, yes, Twin Rover's health is very, very low. But at the same point, a lot of these bosses use magical attacks, including Baronade. Uh, and, you know, that magic resist, it saved them. Uh, once or twice. It's been that important, really, hasn't it, Cat? <clears throat> yeah, Twin, twin Rovers are always in, interesting to watch. 
Yeah, definitely. Okay then, so, um, let's just think about this here. So that's, um, well, this is the battle. Um, so we're going to have to deal with a few things here. First of all, the, um, well, the boss room itself, um, I believe it's probably best here to give a bit of an advantage to Baronade. Um, I understand that normally I wouldn't do this, so I do want you to be with me on this one. Um, with regards to Twin Rover, it shouldn't matter whether those platforms are there or not. I'd just say have the top and bottom be Jabu Jabu's belly, so Baronade has that connection to Jabu Jabu and can spin about freely, uh, while uh, with regards to Twin Rover, they can just have the walls, basically. Um, it depends. Um, but I'd rather give Baronade a slight buff here. But uh, again, I'd want you to be on this uh, with us as well. I do agree that that's the best way to go. Because I can spoil it immediately that if, if we would have just huge gaping holes on the map, Baronade would just self-KO quite quickly. <laughs> yes, I can happily say that now. I was going to wait a bit, but uh, exactly. I believe that if it was uh, the holes in the map, I don't think Twin Rover would defeat Baronade. I think the room itself would defeat Baronade. Actually, let's just remove Twin Rover from the equation. Just be like Baronade versus Room with Pillars. Um. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the first decision on this. The second decision is uh, who will be Baronade and who will be Twin Rover? Well... I have done a lot of the automated fighters as well, so I, I guess I'm, I, I would like to take Baronade this time again. Okay, so I will take Twin Rover. And then the third thing is we've got to decide, you know, as a rough rule of thumb, who would win with regards to the stats and with what percentages. And again, because we've put the percentages here, just because we've put that one fighter will win with a certain percentage, does not mean that this specific battle, that fighter would win, because we're always thinking on the fly, and if specific actions happen, one fighter may very well win. Nonetheless, um, I'm going to put down my general uh, percentage, and that's what I'm putting down. Do we agree on that, Kat? Yes, fully agree. Okay, good. Mm, so... Uh, we'll get into the fight then. Um, Twin Rover has a higher intelligence than Baronade, and therefore, Twin Rover has uh, has initiative. Uh, so, Twin Rover sees Baronade in the middle of the room as they're both flying on opposite ends of the room to each other, just observing Baronade. And, uh, yeah, it's just like, Call me! Do you, do you see that over there? It, uh, it looks as though that's some jellyfish? Nah. And then, uh, you know, um, so Kume's like, Nah, that's not a jellyfish, that's a flower. And, uh, they both sort of stop to stare at it for one second. Um, and then it's your turn, cat. So, at, <clears throat> at this situation, I, I would see that Baronade does have an inclination that th th there is now some disturbance in the room. And it, it is a jellyfish time, but which is the jellyfish going to target? I'm actually going to take a die. So, uh, odds, the water fire... Uh, evens uh, towards ice. Mm. And I rolled a three. Okay. So, Baronade aims towards uh, Kume. G 
Kume, Kume going, Ah! I think it's firing at me! And um, attempts to dodge out of the way, uh, whilst, um, hmm, Katake is like, I better help you, sis! And Katake aims an ice bolt at the um, electrical, uh, well, the electrical socket that's aiming at uh, Kume, basically. Um, so, uh, this is where we've got to determine what happens. Um, of course, Baronade will be able to do something now, but there is an electric stun that has been put on, uh, Kume. Kume has attempted to dodge. I'd be assuming this is with time. So, um, yeah. I would say that Kume dodges the, the blast. Um, but... Again, I want to agree with you on that one. Uh, it, it was a chilly face, not a beam. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, uh... <laughs> Kume's like, Ah! I thought that was a lightning bolt! It's a jellyfish! <laughs> and Katake's like, I, I, I think I killed a jellyfish! And they keep squabbling amongst themselves because they're confused why they thought it was a beam and not a jellyfish. Um, and that's on Kume and Katake, 100%. It's not on me at all, okay? So, <laughs> we'll, we'll say it's on them. <laughs> Sorry, Twin Rover. Um, so it, it's your, well, <laughs> it was, um, oh, you forgot to sort of take an action there, but yeah, what, what was your action whilst they're squabbling about the fact that they've been evading jellyfish and not beams, uh, after Kume, well, technically ran away from the jellyfish for some point, and I, I would assume the jellyfish would kind of be defeated by the ice beam, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I would also expect that that particular jellyfish is now, if not fully dead, at the least frozen somewhere on the ground. Okay. And, <clears throat> well, Baronade would, you know, sense that there was a new disturbance, but it's coming from the other direction. Now it's time for beam. From where that blast came from. Okay. So, uh... Yeah. Um... Hmm. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think how they would act on this one. Um... Yeah, so... Um... Yeah, Kotake is like, Hmm, well, this is a beam! <laughs> Aiming directly for me, see? See, Kume? And Kume's like, Ah, uh, watch out! That's a little bit strong. So, Katake actually doesn't dodge this, and Kume uh, tries to hit the um, emitter of the beam with a fire blast. That that's my final a action. Although, what kind of happens slightly within this is Katake's like, hmm, I believe that's electric. I'm going to change my uh, shielding a little bit to try to. Uh, Deflect it a bit. So that's what goes on. So effectively, uh, Katake takes the beam head on. Um. Yes. Uh, well, Baronade doesn't really have fast enough reaction time to, well, change the course of action at the. Mm. It, it's the beam and then waiting. Mm. Okay, so my opinion is on this one is that the um, the lightning bolt ends up a bit off target due to Kume, okay? Uh, Kotake does take the brunt of it, but like I said, I believe Kotake would be able to put up some defense towards it. Um, nonetheless, Kotake's on severe damage here, which is going to impair some of Kotake's abilities because... That electric stun is very powerful. We both know that. Um, and even if Katake was fully focusing, um, some of it would go through. I don't believe Katake is fully focusing. So, well, actually, I say a bit too much. It's moderate to severe. So, are we happy with that one? Yep. Yep. 
So basically that's what happens there. But Baronade is a little bit damaged from the fire beam. Uh, so much that I probably say that one or two of the cords um, connected to Baronade have probably been destroyed. Um, so uh, yeah, it's it's on uh, it's on Baronade here, I believe. But uh, you know, just making sure we're correct on damages here. So yeah. yeah. So well, Baronade reacts to stimuli. There there was an attack. It's a jelly uh, a jellyfish towards that attack. Mm. Okay. So um, <laughs> so what happens is that Katake is like, Kume. <laughs> She's just like, Kume, watch out! <laughs> this being actually controls quite a punch. And uh, so Kume is like, mm. Well, we killed the jellyfish before. So Kume would attack the jellyfish with a fire blast, and uh, Katake would. Uh, Katake would probably. Hmm. It depends if Katake believes in Kume enough, but they've squabbled. So I'm gonna say that Katake would not help Kume out here. Katake is seriously winded, so would take the time to uh, basically recuperate. Uh, if that makes any sense. Yep. So, um, if we're going to take the um, the result of that, I believe another jellyfish would be destroyed, um, and Katake would be slightly recovered, would be able to take actions, but the damage would be something that would limit Katake slightly, uh, in my opinion. But more damage would take Katake out of it, honestly. So... Uh, it's over to you. Well, the, the stimuli and response follows one another. The, there was an attack on a jellyfish. It's it's beam time. Okay. So, um, Kume, uh, Kume would naturally um, just basically run away from this. Um, Katake would be like, hmm. I think there's a little bit of a uh, gap in Baronades. Well, not in Baronades, but in this being's armor. And uh, Kume is like, not now, I'm trying to evade, <laughs> uh, sort of thing. So um, Katake would start, because I'd say it would be half an action, if that makes sense. Katake would start an ice attack towards the exposed flesh of uh, Baronades being. Because Baronate has let out two jellyfish at this point, so I believe there would be a gap. Um, tell me if I'm wrong on that one. So yeah, there definitely would be a gap. Yeah. So um, if that's the case, how I'd rule it again, we have to agree on these things. But how I'd rule it is that Kume does evade, and that Katake actually scores a minor hit on Baronade. Uh, so yeah, minor damage on Baronade, however Baronade will be regenerating because of being attached to da Jabu Jabu eventually, um, so it depends how long Baronade would stay in this, and uh, yeah, no damage to Aether Twin Rover yet, basically. So it's it's on you again. Well, Baronade got hit once again it's it's another beam <laughs> okay so under this case uh kume would be like katake watch out <laughs> you've been hit by that before and katake's like i know i know i'm moving on it stepping on it so um uh, Katake would notice, sorry, Kume would notice what Katake had done. Uh, so Kume would be aiming at Baronade in the exact same exposed spot. Uh, Katake would be trying to move away. Um, my opinion on it, Katake is slightly injured though. Uh, and the slight injury, injury that Katake has, um, does actually mean that Katake would um, get hit ever so slightly by the beam, in my opinion. 
uh, because um, because that would lower Kotake's mobility. So, but it's only a slight hit. You know what I mean? It, it brushed Kotake. So I would say that uh, Kotake is on severe damage and Kume is on no damage here. And Baronade is probably on moderate damage. Uh, you can argue on that because Baronade would still be healing slightly here. Um, but yeah, what do you think, Kat? Yeah, I'd say moderate is uh, on Baronade is quite okay. And on money due to the soul regeneration going on. Mm. Okay, then. So what does Baronade do here? Well, the beams have worked, but Baronade's not really having the capability to tactic it out. It's jellyfish time. Okay. Katake is like, this this boss is no joke. Uh, we 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 got to use our full full force against him, sis. And so uh, Kume's like, eh, I'm not too fond of doing this, but I think, I think this boss is powerful. So they would actually um, merge. Um, I've forgotten what I said, fusion. Uh, they would fusion during this moment um, that the jellyfish was going towards Katake. And they would fuse it sort of two-thirds towards... Um, <laughs> um, so they would merge two thirds of the distance would be Kume's and one third would be Kotake um, and yeah um, I leave it to you do we need to debate whether the fusion would go on without a hitch because they're both still quite fast even considering um, or would you say that the jellyfish would do deal some damage would that be enough to kill Kotake you know, all all of these questions, Kat. So I I leave it with you. And then what does Baronade do? Well, knowing how fast they tend to move around when the fusion happens and like before it, I'm almost certain that the jellyfish would just go off course. Okay. So during that moment, it's a successful um, fusion. Uh, Twing Rover would wink at Baronade, and I don't know why. Um, I have more questions than answers. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, there is a jellyfish somewhat close to Twing Rover, fused form. And uh, Baronade, it's your turn. Uh, Twing Rover would be on sort of more minor damage. Uh, because the fusion, I would assume, would give some regen, and the fact that Kume was completely uninjured uh, would, um, you know, make the um, make the fusion a bit better, even though Kotaki is quite heavily injured. Yes, uh, I I would say that like since Baronade would have a very confused stimuli from this. Because there was a target, it's gone, but there, there is now something else. So without recalling the first jellyfish, would send out another jellyfish and hoping that it would hit something. So mm -hmm. the jellyfish is going somewhere where Baronade would assume the target to be. Okay. Um. So... Under this, Twing Rover would not be messing about. Twing Rover would dodge as fast as they could, which would be quite fast considering minor damage. <laughs> and, um, well, I, I believe Twing Rover would be slightly faster under Fusion, although we didn't put it under parameters. So, you know, Twing Rover would just dodge completely. Is what Twing Rover would do during that. Get out of the way of the uh, jellyfish. Well, the jellyfish debacle would take Baronade some time. I, I would see that Twin Rover would have time to 
do something else as well. Yeah, although I wanted to make sure that you said that because you you know what I mean. Like, um, you know, I'm always making sure you check on your actions rather than me check on mine. I didn't want to assume. Of course, the next action Twin Rover would do would be a, well, an ice blast uh, towards Baronade uh, with, um, with, of course, the fact that the ice blast would be towards Baronade's weak spot, which would be where the jellyfish aren't. Um, I believe that, um, I believe that Baronade would take the full hit, and at the very least, Baronade would be at, well... I think I might have said moderate before. I'd say moderate to severe damage. Yeah, it, it, it would be severe. Yeah. Definitely at this point. Well, we can see where this is going. Do we want to call it now, Cat? Yes, because Baronade would... like It would take... Uh, the Baronade would take the full hit before the, the two jellyfish could even come back. Yeah. And Twin Roa would have enough time during that to ma- make another attack. Yeah. Due to Baronade's damage, due to Baronade's weak spot, at this point of the match, there is no way to say without 100% certainty that our victor, and when I mean 100% certainty, I mean this match... Our victor is Twin Rover. Okay? And, well... Do we want to explain why? Yeah, sure. So. Uh, yeah, Twin Rover's arsenal is just so, so packed with uh, things to respond to Baronade. Even without the mobility and intelligence, but those two factors just make it certain. <laughs> yeah. There is a... M- okay, so... Um, there, there is something funny about this that we discussed, and Kat, you brought it up, and it's completely right. But without taking personalities into consideration, Twin Rover would have won this fight approximately 99% of the time. We would have still given uh, Baronade a 1% chance to win, but that would be on a few factors. I'll, I'll give that to you, and we'll explain personalities afterwards. So, you know, why would it be a 99% chance that Twin Rover would win, and what would be the 1% chance that uh, Baronade would win in this scenario, Cat? Well, uh, Baronade's toolset is also very strong, but the lack of intelligence and understanding the surroundings would make Baronade's chances to actually hit Twin Rover pretty much random. Yes. Um... So, if, if there is the very, very niche case of a jellyfish being right in a specifically good spot, and then beam distracting the twins, they could be stunned and die because of that fatal error, but the likelihoods of that happening is super, super low. (laughs) And one of the likelihoods of that happening, one of the reasons of that happening, and one of the main reasons Swing Rover just wins this outright is that very, very high mobility. Twing Rover is very tough to get hit um you know if they are not damaged and uh, i think it's time to go into the other part that actually decreases twin rover's percentage if they're not distracted so i give it again to you cat yes uh, remember that uh, twin rover had the 99 percent chance to win if their personality was not considered but mm. we have to take into consideration the personality of the two sisters, which would lower their winning chances to 90%, due yes. to them loving the bigger at each other. Yes. We calculated that it would be 90% win for Twin Rover, 
just because they might bicker with one another, get hit, and then it's GG. Um, which is probably one of the worst ways to lose a match is due to <laughs> underestimating your opponent and worrying more about bickering with your sibling. Um, again, uh, we, we actually saw this here in this specific match. Um, you know, due to their bickering, uh, Baronade actually got off a good hit on Kotake. Uh, the thing is with that, though, is that basically, after that first hit, the likelihood of Twin Rover bickering was far less because they saw... Uh, Baronade as a threat. Again, Baronade could have, you know, completely destroyed Kotake outright. In this scenario, Baronade didn't. Um, but it really does depend on, upon the specifics of is Kotake blocking, you know, um, is Kotake completely distracted? Is Kotake moving? Same with Kume, you know, um, is Baronade, uh, you know, has Baronade got good knowledge of the opponent? Even though Baronade doesn't have a good intelligence, are there a good amount of uh, jellyfish around to give Baronade a better perception of things? Um, and all of that, basically. But, uh, yeah, it might have actually gone to a Baronade win this match, just due to the fact that those two were bickering. Um, but, of course... Even with them bickering, like, the chance of a second hit and then going on to defeat Kume was still quite low. And even if one of the sisters would have been taken down, there is still a very likelihood that the other sister could have finished the job. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, for this battle, the fact that... The fact that there were two of them and not one of them, that actually gives that 90% win chance. Um, I believe the win chance would have been higher if only one of Twing Rover would have been fighting off against Baronade. Because that one of Twing Rover would not have been distracted by their other sister. So. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's funny how the strength of a character becomes their weakness in the end. Yeah. So, I know we've talked about Baronade, but we'll put in the stats. Um, basically, for Baronade, I'm just going to ask you this as a question, Cap. If Baronade had Intelligence S, would Twin Rover still be standing? If Baronade would have S intelligence, I would see Baronade winning almost all of the fights, just straight out. Because at S level, Baronade could fool enough of opponents to just trick into victory. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah. My point being here is that it's really the intelligence that pulled Baronade down here. Uh, Baronade has the abilities, can take some hits pretty well, um, with a good enough intelligence or a good enough mobility in that fact, Baronade would have been able to far easier, e far more easily, uh, well, you know, we'll just be able to defeat Twin Rover, really. But, uh, yeah, just just asking you then, what intelligence do you think Baronade would have needed to defeat Twin Rover if we're dealing with that stat on its own? Hmm. Intelligence alone, that, that is a good question. Like, S would be a certainty. I, I think it might need to go up to A to give the odds proper to Baronade. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, we've sort of explained it. Um, Baronade has a good tool toolkit. Jellyfish are great. Um, if you had a good intelligence, electric stun is a brilliant move. Absolutely brilliant. Um, and is one of the reasons Baronade had a shot in the first place. And, uh, 
yeah, the health is good. Um, the power isn't too necessary due to special abilities. It was just that Baronade did not have the intelligence here, um, for the most part, uh, that, you know, fed Baronade this loss. So, yeah, okay then. Um, anything more you want to say on this match? Hey, you, you did bring up the good question which will haunt me. <laughs> How horrible of a, a boss fight would Baronade be in the video games? If their intelligence would actually be... Oh, you no! Know. <laughs> like, you, you would be stuck in a forever-ending loop which you just can't win. Mm. I mean, I think that, like, actually fighting in this match, I'll just say this quickly, it would be a completely different match in the game. You know, Baronade would, because Baronade can detach all the jellyfish, the jellyfish would just be swarming Link, and Link could do nothing about it. I mean, sure, like, you know, um, the player is Link um, in this game, and, you know, if, if, um, if in this game the player knew exactly how to kill Baronade, you could still do it. But Baronade with an Intelligence S... Um, a lot of new players would have rage quit at that boss battle because you would need to know the specifics of how to beat Baronade slash be very quick um, with regards to your boomerang in order to do any damage to this boss with intelligence S. I can see the jellyfish swarming. I can see Baronade giving all the electric stuns, you know, possibly even flailing towards Link at the same time. You know, I... Uh, it would be a nightmare. It would be like a Dark Souls boss, honestly. Um, yeah. What do you think, Kat? Yeah, then no no you brought up another possibility because I'm I'm <laughs> shocked if somebody hasn't <laughs> modified Dark Souls to have Zelda bosses already. <laughs> Link goes to a campfire, humanity restored. <laughs> Yeah, that is true. But, uh, yeah, for me, I'm happy enough with this. So, if it's okay with you, I think I think we're going to close out on that note. Um, yeah? Yep. So, again, putting it back to here. Uh, this is Boss Battle Round 27. And, again, um, yeah, I had fun with it. It's always fun having a Twin Rover fight. Um, and yeah, I'll stick around for people who are in the chat. I do notice you, but, uh, for people just listening about this boss battle, it's goodbye from me. And I forgot to say goodbye for myself. Bye. I, I'm, I'm going on. Bye-bye. Um, and Cap? Timbersweet. <laughs>